What goes boom, 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 boom? But mostly on your pocket. Of course, it's the $500. JBL, Boombox 2. It wouldn't be JBL if you wasn't paying a heavy price. A heavy price, a heavy speaker at six kilos, or 5.9 kilos to be exact. Of course, I know you can get bigger speakers. But in terms of where portability ends and, you know, a slap and, oh, I'm knackered, starts, this is six kilos is probably at that point or where bigger is not really that portable, but more of a convenience. I've done a review on the Boombox 2. I'm hoping, I guess hope that you've already seen it because then you'll already have a handle that it plays deep down to 40 hertz. Is that, is that a big deal, Al? Well, yeah, that is a big deal. That's deep bass. Anything below 50 hertz, we're talking sub bass. That's really, really nice, but it's $500. It's six kilos. It does what it says on, on the box. Well, it says JBL, but if it said boombox, we'd say, yeah, fair enough, it's a boombox. Plays deep, but hey, on my particular ND version, it's got this massive, well, ma massive, if you just do a sine wave sweep, 2.5 kilohertz drop. I guess where you'd expect the crossover to be. Is it crossover or something else? I don't know. But there are issues, the mids, it is V-shaped, so there's a recessed mids, then you get some highs at the end. It does play deep, but you've got to go over about 50% before it starts turning into a boombox. It's actually really usable indoors, below 50%. It's actually reasonably balanced, just doesn't have sparkle. But it, it does what you're expecting it to do. It's, it's massively deep bass for a speaker that's, you know, this size. Obviously, it's big, so you'd expect it to go a bit deeper than smaller speakers, but it does have a, a peak in, you know, about 45 hertz. So it's going to give you deep bass. If I haven't already said it, I'll say it again. It's gonna give you deep bass. Is it the deepest bass you've ever had? No, of course not. It's not a subwoofer. But in terms of a boombox, it delivers. But as we found out in the, my first video, you know, it's gonna limit bass and 80%, and then it's not gonna go that loud because all of the bass is there. The loudness really comes from the mids and highs. Um, and it's keeping its dollop of bass and therefore not going as loud as you'd expect for a speaker of this size. Now, I'm putting it up against the Onyx Studio 7. It looks like a planet. It's got a handle that's more about style than any practical, uh, anything, anything, any help it's gonna give you in the real world. Why is it out? Well, I'll tell you. It's because we've got tweeters here. So we've got a, a woofer, passive radiator, passive radiator at the back, a pair of tweeters. It was a big deal after the six with its single tweeter, single woofer. People's, oh, now we've, got, now we've got tweeters and that stereo. Well, I know there's, some of you still argue with me whether that's stereo, it's not stereo. Two woofers would make it a stereo. However, it does make it more focused, uh, tighter, and, and maybe a little clearer than the Onyx Studio 6, but I do prefer the Onyx Studio 6 because uh, it's, it's a warmer sounding speaker. The problem with this handle is it's right where the tweeters are. Of course it's gonna interfere uh, with the sound. Of course it's gonna make a difference in the real world. For what? We haven't even got IPX7 because they didn't put a cover. <laughs> they didn't even put a cover uh, where we have our auxiliary. Oh, 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 did you say auxiliary? Yes, it's got an auxiliary input. Because uh, it's a barrel charger, um, a USB, but it's only service mode. So it really, I've said, I say it many times. Sometimes it just seems like they've gone out for a lunch with the bosses, all had, you know, a couple of bottles of wine. I scribbled something on a piece of paper and thought that was a really good idea and they came up with that. <laughs> because, and I thought it was brilliant because they've added a sec second tweeter and they knew, wow, well, just, it specs will say a second tweeter and people are gonna buy it. But, oh, there's so much wrong with that design, not least, you know, look how much is in. So when you have a speaker, oh, I don't know if you know, when you put a speaker on any surface, it's coupling with that surface. That's why you get isolation platforms and stuff like that to decouple your speaker. But the thing is, most of us, for speakers like this, we get, we're we wanting more bass because there's only, oh, I wouldn't break it, because there's only a tiny bit of uh, the actual speaker, apart from the handle, which is not what we want. So you've got some met the metal handle and a little bit there. So you're not really maximizing in the way the Onyx Studio 6 does the coupling benefits um, of the surface that you put it on, if indeed you want more bass. So it's gonna sound a bit more woolly if you couple it. It's gonna sound tighter if you don't couple it. But you've got the options if they, if you can get a lot of that in of that speaker onto that that surface you're on for proper coupling. Now, 
What's the point of this video? You're going on about 20 minutes, we don't even know what you're doing. Do you know what? <laughs> Join the club. But the point of this is, deep bass speaker, deep bass speaker. $500, about 200 quid, 200 dollars. Did you spot that's less than half the price? And we've already talked about the Onyx Studio series having serious deep bass. So remember, when we talk about bass, we're talking upper, the mids, the deep. So the deep, there's gonna be arguments for me, deep is, for speakers like this, 60 hertz and below, then I consider it deep bass. So these are deep bass speakers, which when at the, you know, below 60 hertz without rolling off is really what we're talking about. To get a handle on whether the Boombox 2 is worth the dosh, low volumes, and I already said this doesn't come alive till you go to higher volumes, but that's not a terrible thing. That does mean I, this is really usable indoors. It won't be overwhelming bass, in my opinion, 50 hertz and 50 percent volume and below, it, it's gonna be usable. You, it's gonna get bass heavy after that. So 40% on the, on the Boombox 2 is where you are when, when you go on 50% volume on the Onyx Studio 7. You say I make you nervous, a tragedy, I'm a beautiful disaster, a reckoning, you wonder how I got this way. You think I'm someone to be saved, someone to clean up and tame, oh, some things never change, never change. You think I would look pretty on your arm once you cover up my bruises and battle scars, but it always ends the same. Can't bear the things I've had to face. Got you crying on your knees in pain. Oh, some things never change, never change. Oh, you break your back to make me feel it. Stopped asking for forgiveness Cause you should know Only fools dread with the angels Fear to go But you keep trying to get too close Save myself by turning into stone when loudness matched, the Onyx Studio 7 at these relatively low volumes, although 50% on the Studio 7 is 40% on the Boombox 2, Studio 7 not only holds its own in terms of bass, can actually dig a bit deeper. 47 hertz peak is bigger on the Studio 7, but then it's slightly more boosted, believe it or not, than the Boombox 2, and therefore we're losing out in the mids now. It's making it sound more sterile. The Boombox 2 just sounds bigger and more powerful dominating the upper bass, but it was a surprise to me, maybe a surprise to you, the Studio 7 can dig as deep and a bit more at lower volumes than the Boombox 2. Maybe a shock to you, it was a shock to me to find, you know, at these, at this particular volume comparison, the Onyx Studio 7 goes deeper in the bass for the same loudness than the Boombox 2. What you said, it comes alive after 50%. But it's doing that at the expense of the mid and upper bass. So it's still stronger mid and upper bass on the Boombox 2. And it is all about that. Of course, it's also all about the bass here. But I think there's more trade-offs on the Onyx Studio 7 for them to get the bass. Obviously, it's a smaller speaker altogether. The, the drive, there's only one woofer for a start, which is smaller than one of the woofers on the Boombox. And we've got two of them. So overall, I've, I already said I prefer the 6. I just thought it was more relevant to compare the 7, as it's the latest one out. For me, that, that's a sterile sounding speaker, clinical. If you consider yourself an audiophile, you wouldn't be looking at videos like this, but you may be because you think you're an audiophile and you're not actually an audiophile. I hate to break, you, break the news to you, but you're thinking, well, that's just clearer, and yes, I don't, don't want overwhelming bass. I, 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 I want to hear the sound as it's meant to be heard natural and all that. And you'll probably think that's, that's lovely and that's better, but for me, it's... It doesn't put the smile on my face. It's just too clinical. Whereas where there's, I know there's no sparkle and it's got serious issues in the mids on the uh, Boombox 2. It's just more fun, it's more weighty, even though that actually digs deeper. The, now, real world volumes, 70% on the Boombox 2 is indeed 
85% on Onyx Studio 7, so that's pushing it a bit. But for me, these are the, the volumes you're going to play a speaker like that at. Give me a second chance. They don't come on often, but please, you know I can't stand it. When you don't talk to me, when you don't talk to me. There's something inside, yeah, there's something inside That brings me back to you, yeah No, I can't hide it, no, I can't hide it anymore Something inside, yeah, there's something inside that brings me back to you, yeah. No, I can't hide it, no, I can't hide it anymore. 70% on the Boombox 2 is 85% on the Studio 7. Studio 7 still can get close to the Boombox 2 in terms of absolute deep peak, so 55 hertz peak here. It's quite close, but overall, and even in that peak, the Boombox 2 completely dominates. And now the Studio 7 switching its overall tuning, and it's more mids focus now. And compared to the Boombox 2, the bass is lacking now because of the mids and the upper bass, which the Boombox 2 completely dominates. I said it comes alive after 50%. It's putting the Onyx Studio 7 in its place now. The bass is meaty. It makes that sound a bit thin, a bit anemic, and it isn't. That, that digs deep still, but as you push the volumes, it becomes more mids focused and it was already a bit out at lower volumes. For me personally, I think it's even more out now. It's one note tuning kind of for that, you know, around the 50 hertz peak where it will still deliver, but then it just becomes a bit disjointed. I mean, it's just a clear winner now, the Boombox 2. So in terms of, well, that's a deep bass speaker and that's a deep bass, yes, but in the real world, that's just gonna sound smaller. That's gonna sound bigger. Look, major issues on this speaker. But in terms of the fun factor and having a lovely, lovely deep bass, uh, you know, some of the music, some of the genres you're likely to play on this is going to be, it's going to fit absolutely perfect. But, you know, the so-called self-declared audio files out there looking at this video and already tut-tut-tutting at, at my critiques are going to say, there's only one thing I've made by, and that's on Studio 7, that's fine. But I mean, I, I find it sterile, clinical, um, and just boring, quite, quite honestly. Once you get over the, the deep bass that it does deliver, it's already struggling, isn't it? I think we know what's going to happen, but we'll do it anyway. The maximum volume, and by the way, both of these speakers will go louder on mains. This will go about a decimal louder because it's going deeper in the bass, so less than that in the mids and highs. So about decimal louder when you plug in the mains, about two decibels louder, but it's not a night and day difference. This is about the portable speaker test. I did the mains test in the first video. So 100% both of them on, on the battery. But yeah, I'll get to the specs afterwards. Girls with their nails done. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
So the Boombox 2 absolutely decimates the Onyx Studio 7 in terms of overall volume on battery power. But the Studio 7 should know it does still maintain a decent dollop of bass. It just simply doesn't have the volume and the power of the Boombox 2. And neither of these speakers can deliver on the 40 hertz peak of the original track. So they're both rolling off considerably now, but they are attempting to maintain a decent dollop of deep bass. And even though the Boombox 2 is so much louder, you can see how 1 kilohertz tuning is coming together. And that means the Studio 7 has an even more mids focus balance now, and then rolling off pretty quick, while the Boombox 2 maintains a V shape. It's a game, it's shot, it's match. It's all over. Uh, bar the shouting for the JBL Boombox 2, it's crushed. The Onyx Studio 7, when it comes to playing these speakers loud, no, the Onyx Studio is not the way to go. The Boombox for its $500 is the way to go. It's the winner. Now, doesn't mean to say it's the loudest thing you'll ever hear, but in terms of delivering deep bass with the loudest, it kind of delivers. As you will know, I hope, with from my previous video, introducing the Boombox to, I think it's like three years late or whatever, I am two years late, which is actually quite early for me. Two motion booms, what goes louder? And that's the thing, just always got to remember. Loudness is more about the mids and the highs. We're not that sensitive to our ears in terms of the bass. We can have loads of dollop of bass without calling it that loud. And so when it comes to measuring loudness, and I'm doing it in luffs, it's weighted for the mids and the highs. There's less weighting on the bass. Obviously, you may decide it's, that loudness is just about the bass. Just remember, I'm doing this as technical as I can, keeping it as objective as I can while giving my subjective opinions. And so loudness in terms whether it's, well, I mean, it's, we know here, it's, it, whether it's loudest, whether it's in peak, C weighting, any other weighting, no weighting, this is the loudest speaker. But it may not go as loud as you're expecting because it doesn't push mids and highs. It's favoring the bass. So, it's only one winner for me because I already said it, I didn't particularly like the Onyx Studio 7. It, it's, if it was my only speaker, I'd be happy, as I say about many, there's some speakers I can say, I couldn't only have it as one speaker. I could have that as one speaker. I'd kind of be happy. But once you've got a reference point, no, it's, it's, it's to me, there's no character. It's it's just way, way too clinical. Um, and that's the result. That's the result. Look, it's still Bluetooth 4.2. Going to get to the specs. I've already started talking about the specs. That's the speaker that they've made to milk the market. They've added a tweeter, kept every all the other hardware the same. And they're kidding you that there's another speaker to buy. That is, that's taking a mickey. That's, that's what happens when a company is about I've picked up my drink. I think I didn't even think. That's how comfortable I am sitting here. I'm going to have a little drink. This is what I do when I when I do my edits. Mm. So, going to get onto the specs. Both made in China. You would never expect it that out. So we'd already talked about the price: four hundred and fifty quid, four hundred ninety-nine dollars, about two hundred dollars, two hundred pounds for the Onyx Studio Seven. But here's now. Here we are. This is what it's all about. Oh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. It looks nothing like me. We're calling this a portable Bluetooth speaker. A portable Bluetooth speaker with lovely deep bass, you know, for a speaker that size. But <laughs> the battery, like in there, we've got batteries like that, it's like that. In there, we've got batteries. Like the tiny, is it it's even in there? No, what is it? 11.7 watt hours. There's a little speakers come with batteries like that. What is that all about? I mean, that's an absolute rip off. That, that's, that's a joke. Why? The seventh iteration, 11.7 watt hours compared to the 72.6 watt hours of the Boombox 2. That's a proper battery. You can take that and party for a few hours. You're about an hour on that and you're going to have to use your grandma's old radio. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Both SBC codec. Oh, all again, always SBC. it's always SBC, isn't it? It's cheaper for them. Bluetooth 4.2, 2022, Bluetooth 4.2, Harman Kardon, the lifestyle speaker. So you see where the market is? People who want a pretty speaker but don't know anything about specs, Bluetooth 4.2. I bet when it's on the shelf in Curry's, it don't say Bluetooth 4.2. I bet people are walking, oh, that looks nice, and I'm gonna have one of those on the mantelpiece. But then you're gonna get your 60 year old kids. See, that's like 16 year old kids are coming in and looking, but dad, can I get one of them? That's gonna go boom, boom, boom. It's gonna get that. 
and it's gonna do what you think it's gonna do. Bluetooth 5.1. Both do stereo pairing, because this is partly both. Yeah, can, can, come on, I keep asking every every video. Has anybody ever hooked up a hundred speakers? Who cares? It, you can you can have a hundred party. Maybe maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I need more friends. Has anybody had a party and they've hooked up a hundred JBL speakers? I don't know. Anyway, they both do stereo pairing. But by the way, you're going to go through the the hidden commands on that. They don't even tell you in the specs you can do stereo pairing but apparently you can pair them in stereo by holding the play and the pause for four seconds. But you can't hook up the Onyx Studio 7 with older models as far as I know, unless you're using dual audio, of course. Something like that. Woohoo, they both have auxiliary inputs. You're asking me what the lag, I'm starting to test the lag. 17 milliseconds, that's, basically, that's nearly zero, but it's like a 60th of a second uh, lag on both of these speakers via auxiliary. Only the massive JBL Boombox 2 can be used as a power bank. Of course, well, you couldn't use that as power. 11.7 watt hours, then you're going to get five minutes out after that. You can't use either of them as a phone speaker. That's a deal breaker, isn't it? I was on uh, talking about uh, speaker phones and whether it's a, a big deal or not. It's not a big deal to me. I'm testing speakers. I wonder how they sound. And he already knocked me because uh, I keep going, I'm not even doing it consciously, and I'm going, it's a major, major go, major, major no. It's an old joke, but anyway, I was, Flossie Carter, I saw it, he did the Sony XB23, one of the worst speakers I've ever tested. He said it was really good. I went, I put a comment saying, I said, bruv, I respect you, and respect, I love Flossie. We all love Flossie, he's a big character, but that Sony XB23 that you're liking, it's a load of crap. And he said, it's not crap. The speakerphone alone is worth the money. So, I mean, I don't get that. I don't think you should review a speaker and say it's worth the money just because of the speakerphone. I think you should say it's worth the money because it sounds good. Call me old fashioned. That's the way I think. So we said we both can be plugged into the mains. We know 80 watts on mains power, 60 watts. And that's RMS. So that's the real rating. Uh, on battery versus 50 watts on mains. I don't know what it is just on the battery. And of course, they're barrel charges, so that normally means that they're delivering a bit more than you get on the normal USB-C in terms of charging, which would normally be 10 to 15 watts. We get 38 watts of charging power on the 7 and 100 watts of charging power on the Boombox 2. 3.3 kilos versus 6 kilos. The Onyx Studio, don't laugh, the Onyx Studio 7, not only does it float, it floats with the drivers up. There's only one problem, it's not IPX7 rated at all. So don't, kiddies, don't try that at home. I did try it just to see what happens. And, and do you know what, it did work afterwards as well. So not IP, not even IP, not IP rated at all. Wow. So they're saying, don't get any water on it ever. I did drop it in water, it did float. What I miss, Flo and not many speakers, float and then not many of those float with drivers up and actually actually usable and they didn't even manage an IP rating for it. What the? Um, these, both these companies rate these speakers the same, 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz uh, and only the, the Harman Kardon rate there is at minus, they didn't say plus or minus, minus six decibels, it's, at least they're giving it some sort of scale, there's no scale, if it's not plus or minus, absolutely meaningless, remember industry standard is plus or minus 3 dB. So we got one woofer, two tweeters, passive radio, passive radiator, woofer, woofer, tweeter, tweeter, passive radiators. So dual 106 millimeter woofers. Versus, I did actually say, I think earlier, that, that that woofer was bigger. Actually, sorry, oh, it was a mistake. Who'd have thought Alan Ross Reviews made a mistake. But of course, massively more surface area. So 206 millimeters, a single 120 millimeter woofer, two twenty. 225 millimeter tweeters, 220 millimeter tweeters. So I think that's the one inch that we normally like to go with our woofers, a one inch tweeter versus, I think that's three quarters of an inch tweeter. So if they could do it on there, why couldn't they do it on there? What, what, what does it matter out? Well, it normally means the bigger tweeter, you can, you can bring the crossover down uh, around, as I said, classically around the 2.5 kilohertz where that is, but not the smaller tweeters you tend to have to roll off uh, higher up, maybe up towards seven kilohertz, so, but I don't think they do it bother with these sort of speakers. I'm just putting it out there. YouTube both are crap. When I try streaming, 100 and s 
140 milliseconds versus 170 milliseconds. Eight, uh, 80 milliseconds is my cutoff point. 50 milliseconds is probably where we want to be. That's a wrap. That was the Onyx Studio 7 versus the Boombox 2. I like the Boombox 2. It's not an audiophile's choice. Given its size, you know, it's still hanging in where you can go mobile with it without it being like hugely heavy. It's just something you, you can't wait to put down. It does deliver in the bass. It is fun. It's not sparkly. It's not detailed. There are issues if you're looking for a balanced sound, but hey, below 50%, it's actually quite balanced. You go above 50%, you start getting the boom, boom, boom that you're expecting. $500 is indeed a boom, 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 boom price. I'm sorry. I've tried and tried, I can't think of a better catchphrase to go with the price. Like the handily uh, named JBL Extreme Price 3. If you've got any suggestions to, to really push out how much they're taking out of our wallet where they didn't need to on the uh, Boombox, let me know. But we know where we are. Boombox 2, it's a load of fun, but it's a load of money. You're gonna need a Saturday job probably uh, to, make, to make ends meet after you've paid for that. That was my review. This is the end of the video. I'll see you in another video. I ain't got their life. I ain't got their life. I ain't a project wife. I'm a logic right because I'm not your type. I ain't got their life. I ain't got their life. Sorry, my honey, get it right. I'ma just live my life. I ain't about that. I ain't about that life. Uh.